we have here today looks like a good old ThinkPad X1 Carbon with its slim shape and silhouette, but it's actually the first representative of the ultra compact and ultra light line of notebooks dubbed the ThinkPad X1 Nano. So the Nano stands for a much smaller form factor from what we're used to with the X1 series. At first glance, it is almost identical to the Carbon model, which will be appreciated by the majority of the users, but a keen eye will notice one key difference. This is a significantly smaller X1 model that packs a 13-inch screen. This brings some other changes with it, but the X1 Nano still without a doubt is an ultralight notebook, which inherits its genes from the famous Carbon model, one of the best Windows ultra-portable notebooks of today. As someone who has used the X1 Carbon laptop for years, which is by the way as reliable as it was the first day I got it, I would like to see how it pairs with a more powerful and up-to-date hardware platform, so I'm curious to see whether the X1 Nano is a worthy successor. At first glance, this laptop seems like a scaled-down version of the X1 Carbon model. The fine brush surface is still present on this model, and combined with a matte black finish that literally absorbs light and a weight of only 907 grams, it gives you a feeling of holding something really high-tech in your hands. The cover which houses the screen is made of carbon fiber, while the base of the chassis is made of a magnesium alloy. This is why the laptop is extremely light and at the same time extremely strong, without any flexing or bending, which is the level of build quality we associate with ThinkPad devices. The smaller screen is the first major difference compared to the X1 Carbon model, and it doesn't display 4K, which would honestly be a bit too much in a 13-inch screen. However, it wouldn't be an X1 model if it wasn't at least a little bit ahead of its competition. So it generously offers a screen with full 2K resolution, more precisely 2160 times 1350 pixels on the IPS panel with a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. The screen is anti-glare and it has a brightness of 450 nits with a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1. It is able to display the full sRGB color gamut and has a wide viewing angles of 170 degrees. Also, the screen consumes very little energy so it doesn't drain the battery as much as some other screens. The screen bezels are extremely thin and the bottom one was reduced as much as possible so that the usable surface is practically from top to bottom, as on the larger carbon model. On the top bezel, there is an excellent 720p camera with a mechanical shutter and an additional infrared face recognition software security feature. The computer recognizes when you're using it and the moment you leave, it automatically switches to a locked sleep mode and activates the moment you sit in front of the computer without the need to enter a password or a PIN. The display quality is very, very good. The colors are rich, expressive, images very sharp and text is clear and crisp. This is one of these few screens with display quality comparable to the Apple Retina models. On the surface of the computer base, closer to the hinges and the screen, there are two perforated rectangular surfaces and opposite sides that release warm air from inside of the thin and extremely low volume case. There is also a classical side exhaust slot on the right edge of the device through which the centrifugal fan expels warm air. The keyboard is really good for such a thin profile. Top-of-the-line keyboards have always been one of the hallmarks of ThinkPad X1 models. It is a bit softer than on the Carbon model, but the keys are still comfortable with nicely recessed caps, a large J-shift enter, and an extended right shift key. It is spill-resistant model, though it does not mean that it likes drinks that contain a lot of sugar. There are also shortcut buttons for setting up and ending a video conference. The keyboard is illuminated by a pleasant white backlight and has that recognizable IBM trackpoint thingy for navigation. For some, and for me, it is a feature I can really get used to, but a few people I know who have been using these computers since the time they had IBM name on it, use it to achieve incredible speed and efficiency. It is like a mouse that does not require you to take your hands off the keyboard. There is of course a great multi-touch trackpad with a glassy black surface for precise cursor control and of course additional left and right click keys. To the right, it is also another security feature in the form of a fingerprint reader. Undoubtedly, this reveals the business character of this portable computer whose users usually care a little bit more about the security of their data. As for the available connections, Lenovo opted for a minimalist approach, but with the fastest possible ports. Hence, there are two USB-C connectors on the left edge of the device with Thunderbolt 4 certification, which are also the fastest version of USB 4 ports. 
Yes, you heard it right. USB 4 ports and in their strongest iteration, which becomes available with the 11th generation of the Intel processor platforms. We just have to find a way to use their potential, but that will also come. In practice, this means data transfers of 40 gigabits per second, as well as the ability to power devices to drop to 100 watts of power and DisplayPort 1.4a support so you can connect two additional 4K monitors at 120 Hz or 1 8K at 60 Hz. As for other connectors, there's also only one more 3.5mm combo audio jack for a headphone and microphone. The sound is projected from the base of the device out of two openings with a pair of 1 watt tweeters and a pair of 2 watt lower frequency drivers. The sound is loud and clear and has Adobe Atmos support, while the sound processing is done by the Realtek ALC3306 codec. The hardware base of this laptop is the new Intel Evo platform, at the heart of which is the Tiger Lake 11th generation core processor made with 10 nanometers Superfin technology. It is a Core i7-1160G7 with four physical cores and eight threads that operates at frequencies from 2.1 to 4.4 GHz. The system controller supports PCIe 4.0 standard and integrates a new high-performance Iris Xe graphics core with 96 executable units. In terms of performance, we were primarily interested in comparisons with the Apple MacBook Air M1 model since both models are aimed at users who are looking for a thin, light, and portable laptop. In Cinema 4D and Blender, X1 Nano is definitely slower, lagging behind the M1 between 6 and 35%. The reason for this is that the X1 processor very quickly hits the upper temperature limit of 100 degrees Celsius and the frequencies limiter trigger in order to reduce the consumption and bring the temperature to an acceptable level. This causes lower operating frequencies, so forget about those promised 4.4 GHz in turbo mode. The reality is that the processor works at half the frequency during computational demanding operations, which incur performance penalties. The longer it runs under load, the more visible this effect is as the processor drops to an effective 1.8 GHz. Of course, we know that these are quite intensive applications that use maximum hardware power. When it comes to the performance of the graphics subsystem, it supports hardware decoding of all current formats. H.264 and 265, WIP9 and the latest AV1. As for gaming, it is possible in Full HD resolution and low detail, in which case it delivers an average frame rate of about 70 FPS. The X1 Nano has 16GB of dual channel RAM. It is soldered to the PCB and is an LPDDR4X 4266 RAM, which definitely benefits the fast integrated graphics and better CPU performance. It cannot be upgraded and you should immediately opt for a model with 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM. The M.2 PCIe 3.0 SSD with 4 data lanes and a capacity of 1 terabyte is in charge of data storage. This is quite enough for a primary mobile device and frequent use on the go. The connection to the internet is achieved through the Intel 6th generation wireless solution based on the 802.11ax standard with 2x2 MIMO support for virtually uninterrupted connection when sending and receiving data from two devices simultaneously. This is ideal for spaces covered by multiple networks such as fairs or congress halls, which is just another business user oriented feature of this model. The computer does not have a LAN connection, which is optionally available via USB-C to LAN accessory and is purchased separately. Powering the device and charging the battery is done with the external 65W USB-C power adapter because realistically there was no need for a more powerful one due to the latest generation efficient hardware. The battery is a lithium polymer type with a capacity of 48 watt hours and a support for fast charging that charges the battery for about 80% in an hour. For full capacity, according to our measurements, it needed an additional 13 minutes. As for the realistic battery life and actual use, it all depends on the chosen power profile. If you need maximum performance at the same level as when the laptop is connected to the AC adapter and at 80% screen brightness, the X1 Nano will run at the next 198 minutes or just a bit over 3 hours. 
if you switch to a more economical mode when it delivers half the performance at 80% screen brightness, the autonomy is doubled with measured 6.5 hours of continuous operation. The cooling system of this notebook is quite quiet and most of the time during less demanding operations is practically inaudible, while in the most demanding mode, for example when playing games, it will produce an occasional 35 decibels of noise, but only for a short time. The temperature on the surface of this device ranges from 35 to 50 degrees. The maximum value is of course achieved when gaming, but there are other laptops for that purpose and the Intel Tiger Lake is expected to get very warm in such a thin case. In the end, let's say that the ultra-compact dimensions in reality mean just a bit less than 30 centimeters in width, 21 centimeters in depth, and only 17 millimeters of thickness. We said earlier that it weighs only 907 grams. The price of the model we tested is around 2400 euros. And to sum it all up, the Lenovo X1 Nano is designed for users who want a lightweight and durable laptop. The Intel Evo mobile platform provides better performance with the arrival of the 11th generation Intel Core processor and faster communication with peripherals with the help of the Thunderbolt and USB 4 standards, which are practically exclusive to Tiger Lake processors. Also, someone who pays 2000 plus euros and these are primarily picky business users, may be partially dissatisfied with the limited connection option due to a current offer and poor availability of appropriate USB-C peripherals or fast Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 external memory. There is a model that comes with a port replicator. It is of course more expensive and another solution is to purchase a USB-C to USB-A Gen 2 hub for 10 to 15 euros, but I doubt that it will meet the approval of the mentioned type of users. But realistically speaking, it is expected for this type of laptop and is not exclusive to the model we found in our review. Everything else, in our opinion, is just top notch. And to answer the question asked at the start of our review, the new X1 Nano could easily replace a 4 year old X1 Carbon. Thank you for watching the latest Bench House review of the latest ThinkPad Ultralight and Ultra Compact laptop. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to our channel for more reviews and also share us your thoughts in the comment section below. Stay tuned for more videos. My name is Marco and I will see you next time.